Timber stand improvement has become a big buzzword in the hunting community. The popular thing is starting to shift from just going out and hunting and posting those grip and grins to doing a little bit of hashtag conservation or at least, you know, taking a picture and using that hashtag. Improving the habitat by removing undesirable species or even removing species that you would like to cultivate but are too overcrowded is a good thing. So even if you're just doing it so you can have a photo op, keep doing it as long as you know what you're doing. But improving the timber has a much bigger effect than just getting likes on Instagram. If you are trying to produce more acorns, timber stand improvement will help with that. If you are wanting to improve the marketable timber on your property, removing undesirable trees or thinning out some unhealthy ones will make your timber grow faster and healthier. It will provide help provide year-round food for deer and turkey as well as cover for a whole host of other species, but you have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you could make some mistakes that could take years, if not decades, to correct. So in this video, we're going to go over two timber stand improvement tips to help you get started on the right foot. But as always, before we get into these tips, do me a favor, and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first tip, before you even start implementing any kind of timber stand improvement on your property, is you have to have at least a passing level of tree species identification and invasive species identification. If you can't identify even just the major tree species on your property, how could you even start doing any kind of timber stand improvement? How would you know which tree species that if you cut down, you'll want to treat the stumps or which ones you want to make sure stump sprout? If you're trying to improve the acorn production on your property, you need to be able to, to identify what oaks are of the red oak family and which ones are of the white oak family. This will also help you identify your early season tree stand locations and your late season ones. Get yourself a tree identification guide and practice identifying trees by their bark and their leaves. And I know in the winter time when all you have is the bark to go off of, it's a little harder to do. So you might have to wait till stuff starts to leaf out to really get a good idea of what tree species it is. But it is very important to at least obtain a passing level of skill identifying tree species. Using that information, you can decide which trees you want to allow to stump sprout, which ones you may want to hinge cut. The biggest things that it'll help you with is to know which trees you want to cut and treat the stumps so they do not re-sprout and take up valuable resources from the trees that you do want to propagate. And the second thing you need before you start implementing any kind of timber stand improvement on the property where you hunt is you absolutely need a plan. So you know how to identify tree species, you know what invasive species look like, you know which trees you want to cultivate and which ones you want to get rid of, so you are ahead of the game now. But if you do not have a plan on how to implement this, you can destroy that game altogether. Without a plan, not only could you mess up your property for a very long time and make it unhuntable, you could be very unproductive with your very limited time at the farm. You might do a little TSI over here and a little over there, and by the end of the year, you may not even be able to tell you even did anything. As I said earlier, you can make your property very unhuntable, or at least very hard to hunt. Let's say you've got a great looking food plot and you want to make the deer more comfortable going into it during daylight hours. So you start doing a little TSI around it and you start doing some edge feathering, trying to promote more cover around it so they feel more comfortable going out in daylight hours. But the rest of your property is terrible cover. So the deer respond to it very quickly and then they just start bedding around it. How are you going to hunt that food plot without busting deer out of it every single time you're, hunt you're hunting it. You're just not. You're going to be bumping deer every single time. And before long, the only thing that's going to be going into that food plot during daylight hours is young deer because they're not smart enough yet to identify it with danger. But they very quickly will. And most likely you're going to end up very frustrated because your target bucks are only going to be using that area at night. You need to know what it is you're doing, why you're doing it there, and in what order you need to do it in. This will help you organize it so you know exactly what you're working on every time you go down to the farm. My biggest tip for creating a plan for your property, regardless of your experience level, is to hire a consultant. Even if you know what needs to be done, and especially if this is your first time doing any kind of habitat management, you should get some help. I recently discovered a feature in Onyx, thanks to a recent Land and Legacy podcast, that allows you to create folders so you can put your little shape files in them and organize 
organize your tasks. This really helps me stay on task because I have a big problem with wanting to jump around with different projects. I get excited about the changes that are going to happen. So I want to jump around and it makes me very unproductive. So this helps me stay on task and I know at the end of the year exactly what I got done. So that was two things you need to do before you start cutting down any trees on the property where you hunt. If you have any more tips to help you uh, learn how to identify tree species or how to help you stay organized and on task, leave those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.